Hello! Where are we going? Ryan here, aka Mac. Oh, it's gone. And welcome. Today we are going to take a look at the Origin 135C. We have done the 100i look, uh, first look already. I wanted to do this one next because it is my favourite out of the three. Uh, and we will take a look at the 125A. We'll hopefully do this before the sun goes down. I didn't realise it was actually setting so fast. Uh, we'll also put it through, not this one in particular, maybe the 125A, uh, put it through the flight test course. For this particular build, the 311O, I think it is, they have tweaked how the ship flies, and it is much better. It wasn't too good when it first came. But anyway, this is the cargo variant, and the short description says, with a deceptive amount of storage space in its sleek, stylish frame, the Origin patented air fuel system, or the AR, the adaptive intake refinery, I think it is. Yep. Uh, with the air system, the 135C model is the obvious choice for musicians, couriers, and anyone trying to get the party started. Get... Uh, hang on, what? Get it there fast and look good while doing it. Okay. So again, very similar to the 100i. The only real difference that I can sort of tell is this rear ramp, which may push the ship up. Just, just a little bit. It's an extra addition of... A I think it says four SEU, yeah, four SEU, and then I think there's two in the front. So you've got six instead of the usual two for the 125A and the 100I. And I have actually got it working where, not I haven't got it working, it works, where you can actually load them up with different bits of cargo that you find on your travels and then sell them. Even mined goods. I went hand mining in a cave and I dropped all the goods off into a box, which has now been um, ticked up again. And sold them at a, at a at a spaceport at a new Babbage spaceport. So you can do that, and it's it's really effective single sort of starter ship. We will look into comparisons between this the Aurora, well, not this one in particular because this is the step up, but the Hundred I, the Aurora, and the Mustang. But the One Three Five C is just such a nice ship. Uh, again, it only has basic weaponry. It is. Um, Two M4 size 2 bearing repeaters, which are down here. Which you can take off the gimbal and put a, size, a couple of size 3 weapons on, which is what I tend to do. I use flight stick. So that is a good option. And it also has the usual two strike force missiles, which are alright. Um, nothing special. I think the 125A gets an extra additional 4. Missiles, I think it has six in total. I'll, I will check when we uh, when we do that review. But it's a different body colour, different paint scheme, a bit more of a, a bluish, greyish tint, which is nice. Uh, what else is there? I don't think there's anything new. Something I have noticed, if you look... We, we did know the other day that you can bring out your quantum drive there. I'm trying to do this quick before the light goes. Uh, and your coolers down here. Someone on stream pointed out to me. I can't remember who it was, but thank you. So that's your coolers. Now your radar. Let me just put my helmet on. That's the wrong button. Your radar is at the front. But you cannot... If you notice here, it says radar system. But you can see it without the torch. You can't open it technically by clicking on it. But you can... Go in here... And if you open up everything by opening the exterior, it will open up and you'll have access to it. Now, eventually, you will probably be able to access it. Otherwise, um, I don't know if it's going to be a button release. In fact, wait a minute. I don't need to turn everything on, I don't think. Let's turn everything back off again. The light has practically gone. I wasn't quick enough. As he slowly gets out of his seat. There we go. There you go. So you can... It's not in there because they haven't quite got the asset made for radars by the looks of things. Oh, they haven't implemented it yet anyway. I'm sure they've, they've got them made. So that's how you access the radar. And then you've got your quantum drive, your two coolers. And then obviously, as most of you probably are aware... The, oops, wrong one. The majority of your components... Or not the majority. I, I suppose just the main ones, your shields and your power plant... <clears throat> is in there and then there's space for other things 
what we'll do is we'll take it for a quick little fly around. Now, this is probably my favorite out of the, the whole of the 100 series lineup. It's the 135C. I do like having that extra cargo space, but it is an extra $10, maybe $15, I think, compared to the base variant. Um, I think it has thruster-wise... It's got 10 maneuvering thrusters, which are these. It's also got two, I think, fixed maneuvering thrusters, which I I think might be these here. I don't know if they are. I've noticed when you're thrusting along, you've got your main thrusters at the rear, and then these seem to blast out as well. So that could be your... What's that noise? Something's going on with my ship. I don't know what I've done. But it also has that air system. Or the adaptive intake refinery, which allows it to operate long-distance flights without the need of constant refueling and is environmentally friendly. Basically, you're able to refine plasma better than most ships. Even larger ships can. Which I'm sure we will see this air system in the future in other ships from MISC. And again, these little fins, they will likely be the um, ailerons when they bring controllable surfaces. But let's just take it for a quick spin. I have used this quite a bit because the last patch, I only had access to these ships, the 100 series. I didn't realize I had to reset my PTU. So I spent a bit of time with them and the 135 was definitely the ship that I spent the most time with. I went mining in a cave. I managed to mine a few bits and then stick them and box them up, as I say, and put them into my storage hold. I went to a wreck at the same time and filled up the rest of the space with the storage hold. And it was a lot of fun. It, um, going back to New Babbage, I was able to sell it all. I will say one thing. The windshield does get um, a bit, not misty, but... Con condensation wise it's uh, pretty irritating at times because it can obscure the view but we don't have windscreen wipers yet and although I can wipe my visor I can't wipe the windshield so we can actually do a bit more of a proper review of the flight now that they've tweaked it as always when they bring something new into the game it needs a bit of balancing and tweaking that is Mostly what the PTU is for, but also what the main PU is for, which is good. We'll try and get somewhere a bit lighter. Now before, when you would turn, it would lose a lot of speed and the vector indicator would drop. You would literally drop out of the sky if you tried to turn at any speed. And then once you realign the vector, the thrusters would seem to kick back in again. Like, it, like you were killing the thrust by turning, which wasn't good. And I did try and start recording my new Babbage flight test uh, around my flight course, but it just wasn't having it. And I got lost, so I needed to restart that anyway. So, uh, spin. Nothing has changed with the roll. That is pretty much the same speed. It's got a pretty decent uh, yaw capability, but it, you do lose a lot of speed while doing so. Your best bet is to roll and turn or pitch. But as way of speed goes, it's not too shabby. As I say, you've got two M4s. But if you notice how sort of condensed, condensation, water, whatever it is, the windshield gets, it can get make the scenery look a bit blurry. You do have two strike forces down here. Uh, you get 48 flare, 5 chaff, which I believe is the same for most small ships. But I think if someone's looking for an everyday run-around ship, the 100 series is definitely a good option. I will look into doing a more comparison version series of videos looking at all the different options. But for the, the uh, 135C, if you can afford that 65 or $60 price tag, it's worth it. But I don't know why you wouldn't just dump the extra $5 for an Avenger. I think the Avenger is still king in this. And even... The 300, you know, the model up from this is, is a better option, in my opinion, because you get better firepower, more, more cargo capacity, 
for five dollars extra. I know they have increased the price, but I think they did they increase it to 50, uh, 65 or did they increase it to 70? I can't remember. But either way, I think if you're going to pay out for this, you might as well go that extra mile and go for the uh, Avenger or the 300i, which is a bit of a, a bit of a shame, really. I'm not sure what the pricing in game will be. Hopefully, it'll be a bit more reflective of. I don't know, making this a bit more viable because it is a beautiful ship. It's such a shame that those other ships are probably a better option. But then, if you're comparing the one three the one hundred I, which is a you know forty five dollar price tag, so more that in line with the Aurora, I would say it is a better option over the Aurora uh, or the Mustang. <clears throat> Maybe until we get the store all box for the Aurora, then you've got a bit more use there. But we will do a much more in-depth look at these ships. This is more of just a first look at what the ships look like, how they generally handle. It has the same dashboard, come to think of it, I didn't mention this, as the 100i. And I have gone through it on that way. You can see all the different... You've got doors, lighting, power, landing gear, all your AVI, FCS, and so on, on that side. And then you've got other ones on this side. I won't go through it all again, but eventually these will all be set up to be functional and you can use them if you want to go fully immersed or you can keybind them. It is up to you. But no, I do really like the 100 series. that They are a sleek, cool looking set of ships. I just feel there's probably other options out there for this one in particular. Maybe not for the 100 series. The 125A will have to put that through some uh, combat scenarios. But anyway, that is just a first look. Do let me know your thoughts on these ships and whether you think they're worth the price tag, whether you're actually planning to buy one. I I, I don't know if I would bother getting one. I do like them, and I think as a, an everyday runaround, they're a great option. But I do have an Avenger Titan, so that is my everyday runaround. But with that said, make sure you hit subscribe. We will be putting this through the flight test, so do keep an eye out for that one on my YouTube channel. And come and hang out over on uh, twitch.tv forward slash supermatbrothersryan. We'll be looking at them in a bit more detail going forwards, I'm sure. As we approach the 30,000 subscriber mark, we will be doing a Star Runner giveaway once that becomes available. And once we reach that 30,000 subscribers. So if you want to be in with a chance, make sure you hit subscribe. It is very much appreciated. Uh, and yeah, that is the Origin 135. If you've got any questions, best chance to get me is over on Twitch. Uh, but do like the video if, you're, if you uh, appreciate these videos. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. See you later, guys.